surprise guest, everybody. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. I am so happy to see you again. How are you? How was your week? I hope that you are so, 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 so well. This week, we are going to talk about what makes a good deck of tarot cards, what makes a bad deck of tarot cards, and how important it is to be able to interpret or divine messages based on or prompted by the images that you see in your decks of cards. How important it is to be able to, <laughs> how important it is to be able to interpret messages based on the images that you see within your decks of cards, inspired by the images that you see in your decks of cards. Please, 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 please click the like button on this video. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do so and please share widely. Before we really get into the heart of the message or the heart of this video, I really just want to say that it is my personal opinion that there are no bad decks of cards. There's really no bad deck. There's really no good deck as told by some sort of definition uh, upheld somewhere. What there are are widely varied interpretations of the suits, of the majors, of the courts. Uh, there are widely varied interpretations of each of the 78 cards in the deck of tarot. Each interpretation informed by the artist or the maker's perspective. You've got to be able to separate yourself from relying solely on the, the card's classical definition. You've got to be able to separate yourself from relying solely on the perspective of the artist or the maker of the cards. Why? Well, because of the hundreds, thousands of decks out there in the world, again, like we've already mentioned, each and every deck is going to be influenced by the perspective, by the emotional state, by the style or the preference, or by the personal experience of the artist or maker themselves. For example, let's take the Five of Pentacles, for example. I really enjoy using that one as a reference. And by the way, uh, I'm not going to pull out any specific deck of cards to show you that this is a bad deck of cards or this is a great deck of cards. I certainly have ones that I prefer. I certainly have decks that I have learned that I like to work with the most. There are decks of cards that I love to look at very much, but that I don't prefer to read with or re use in readings for clients or for myself even. I'm not going to use any specific deck of card because I really, again, I don't think that there are such a, there is such a thing as bad decks or good decks. Again, these are just the perspective of the maker or the artist, right? And I don't want to send the message that this is bad or good. I also don't want to call anybody out because I really respect the artistry of each and every maker, even if I think that that artist or maker is coming from a fear-based perspective. That said, so again, we're going to take our example of say the five of pentacles, and then we're going to use our imagination here because like I said, I'm not going to use any specific deck as an example, right? So traditionally speaking, and, and, and that's not far of a stretch for me to say traditionally, the five of pentacles indicates that there is a bit of financial contraction, that the person is either currently or will in the near future experience um, feelings of scarcity, that the person uh, receiving the card is currently or will in the near future, or even depending on your placement in the reading, semantics, of course, uh, has recently experienced uh, some sort of scarcity or fear of financial insecurity. Some decks of cards, depending on the maker, and this is why I wanna use this as an example, because nobody really wants to receive the five of pentacles in a reading. 
Some decks of cards are going to depict the Five of Pentacles as terrible, as horrible, as, as oh my God, how are you ever going to get out of this, right? Then there are some decks of cards whose artist or maker are going to portray the Five of Pentacles as perhaps an opportunity to look to see where you can draw from your community for assistance. Some decks of cards are going to be made by the artist uh, or maker, excuse me. Uh, some decks of cards are going to portray a card like this as uh, neither here nor there. They are going to offer you this perspective. Hey, you may in the not too distant future, just for example, be experiencing a bit of financial tightening. Money might be tight or those around you might be experiencing tightness and you, for whatever reason, are going to feel more miserly than you would otherwise. You're going to uh, really feel the elements of sharp scarcity. This is really important for me to note. Does a pentacle immediately call to mind financial insecurity, financial scarcity? Yes, right? 9.5, 9.9 out of 10 times, you're going to imagine or pick up that this is about financial matters, right? Especially in a five. But also bear in mind that a pentacle and this is another one of the reasons why it's really important to choose wisely the images of the cards. Choose your tarot decks wisely. Um, is your maker making it all about money, right? Or are they also talking about um, pentacle as the representative to physical abundance, to uh, physical uh uh, looseness and relaxation, right? A five of pentacle is not just about financial scarcity or hardship or any other way I could say money problems. A five of pentacle is also, to me, in, in my uh, experience with this over and over again, going to point toward um, loneliness also. You know, one, two, three, four, five, right? We are at a dip down point in our arc of the story through one through 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Down at a five, we are quite possibly feeling separate or apart from our fellows in the community. We are going to feel that there is, we are in the middle of the big in-between of the beginning and the end, and we will worry that there is, uh, where are we headed? There's not enough. We, are we headed, are we in that limbo land of towards completion or towards the beginning in between directly one through 10, right? So pentacle is not always just about, and I know I'm stating the obvious here to most of us, a pentacle is not just about money and a five of pentacle, going back to our example, is not just about financial hardship. Although to further my point, some makers are going to depict this card, for example, as heavy financial contraction or hardship or scarcity. It's also going to be, or it will separate and apart from not also, be about emotional scarcity. Now to set aside the word scarcity, back to the reasons why using our five of pentacles example, it's so important to bear in mind the perspective of the maker, right? If you happen to be using a deck of cards, uh, whose illustrations are bleak, uh, whose colors are perhaps dark, uh, muted, um, if there is any color at all. This is not, of course, speaking to my preference between colorless or black and white um, decks and decks full of color. But as the artist, the maker is really going to put their feelings behind this particular card and they may use muted colors, darker colors, foreboding imagery, tears, right? Isolation. Whereas another maker, another artist could take, and I've seen this lots of times, I'm not gonna name any decks again. You'll have one deck with this card, the five of pentacles as feeling like a horrible 
a card to pull a horrible outcome or <laughs> you can pull a five of pentacles from a totally different kind of deck whose illustrator, maker, or author will provide you with the perspective of opportunity. Again, think about the five of pentacles as being right in the middle. You could go back a little bit or you could go forward a little bit, depending on the, the willingness, the individual level of, of uh, capacity to to make progress or go, go back a little bit. To put it quite plainly, unless you, the reader, are making the time to sit for even just a quick second when you pull a specific card, especially cards that look fearful, especially cards that um, have some more intense meaning behind them. I'm not going to say bad meaning or fearful meaning because even cards like death, devil, tower, the star, any of the higher swords, right? Any of these more intimidating feeling cards really could present you with an opportunity for movement, growth, or change. Unless you have the innate or immediate skill set to be able to pick up on whatever that opportunity might be, you may be staring at a card that looks super fearful and, 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 and super oppressive in its nature. And you might just pick that message up when really what you're doing is picking up the perspective of the creator of the cards. Let's quickly backtrack to uh, uh, the five of pentacles example one more time because it's it's one of the most obvious I've seen and it's one that I talk about a lot in one-on-one -on -one, uh, tarot mentorships with my students. You have one deck of cards that presents the five of pentacles as again, the person is crying, they're afraid, they're alone, they're reaching out. I've seen decks with all of those things, crying and reaching out and there's not only no resource to be found, either financial resource or physical resource, but there are people that have left them behind. And then you go to another deck of cards where the person is readily, not excitedly necessarily, but readily showing up as willing to use their hands to stay busy while in a time of contraction or limbo, whatever it is you wanna call it, right? The deck of cards over here on this side really, uh, in my opinion as a reader, um, allows or gives the impression of powerlessness, right? At first glance. And the deck of cards over here to this side on the opposite perspective, this card really presents the reader or the recipient of the reading with the perspective of opportunity, right? This card really encourages you from the perspective of this maker to see, okay, well, shit's a little tight right now, or I fear that it may be tight, or you know, I, whatever the case may be. What could I be doing one way or another to uh, create shifts in this particular situation for myself, uh, either in this present moment or a few steps ahead into the future? Now, if you are a seasoned reader and you are super clear and you practice amazing, amazing energetic hygiene, you could look at any deck of cards and know that it might not necessarily be the most obvious uh, read from either of those interpretations. And that's great, right? If you happen to be sort of new to reading the cards and you feel um, really aided by the imagery in helping you figure out what it is that you're trying to say or helping you figure out what the meaning of the reading is for your client, it's going to be, again, so important to choose your decks wisely for this case. This is another reason why I feel it not impossible, but really important to encourage people learning how to read tarot to 
you know, take note of the meaning of the classical interpretation of all 78 cards, five of pentacles included, but really I think a better discussion that we could have, and I think that we will have later on down the road, um, is how to rely more so on your ability to divine messages from whatever source of spiritual communication you work with. Because if you are just reciting the definition of the cards, if you are relying solely on the, the, uh, the deck's perspective alone, you are going to carry with it an emotional charge that quite possibly does not belong to you or to the recipient of your reading if you're reading for other people you're going to carry into the reading the emotional charge that in fact belongs to the creator of the deck you were using. What if you could just have no emotional tie whatsoever? What if you know you sort of were in line with the spiritual perspective globe? There is no horse in this race, right? Which is one that I work with a lot. I work from that perspective more often than not that the spiritual entities that that communicate with me really don't have a horse in the race right they have no human tie here and so it's neither bad nor good it just is what it is you know as Tunchi says uh, i do what i do and you do what you can do about it <laughs> anyway what makes a good tarot deck and what makes a bad tarot deck Again, to reiterate, there is no bad or good deck of cards. There are simply cards that are widely influenced from the perspective or by the perspective of the person that made those cards. And if you are reliant upon that imagery to be able to give your tarot reading, that is totally okay for you. Uh, I would encourage you to, again, to when you receive a card that you are, uh, or excuse me, when you pull a card that you are, you know, weary of its message or uncertain of its message, rather than just relying on what the card is telling you uh, it's supposed to mean, supposed to mean, what if you could just pause for a second and try to divine or take in the message that the card is telling you it's here to share with you. I think the last example I would give to you to make this really, really obvious is one of, say, a major and how also an important perspective. When I say major, I mean major arcana also. Also, you've really got to take into consideration that each of the 78 cards, first of all, is not going to mean the same thing each and every time you do a reading. I don't care if it's the same person or not. It's not going to mean the exact same thing from person to person from one day to the next, unless you are in fact working with that same person and there have been absolutely no changes made in their lifestyle or habits and even then, even then I would wager to say that it, the whole thing is not going to have the exact same meaning. There's just no way that's possible if you are receiving organic messages from spirit. So that said, each card is going to mean something a little different, show up to give you maybe four different interpretations of itself from time to time. And once again, this is another reason why it's so important to uh, be mindful of the decks you're choosing and the perspective from which the artist or maker is coming, right? You know, sometimes a five of pentacles is going to, again, tell you on this day that it's talking about, you know, uh, a fear of financial insecurity. The next day, it's going to be talking to you about 
about making different decisions for yourself on a physical level? Are you depriving yourself of rest? Are you depriving your body of enough nutrition, right? This is not just about money. It's not just about your physical body. It's also not just about your relationship to the theory of security. It's not just about any one thing. It's going to change. Lastly, let's quickly look at the, uh, this has been coming up for me a lot in individual readings for clients, the Empress card. So, you know, depending on the maker, the artist, the perspective of that particular deck, right? Sometimes the Empress card is all about the mother archetype, the matriarchal archetype. Sometimes the perspective of that maker or artist is all about pleasure and sensuality and true, true, true uh, languid empress living. Sometimes that artist is going to give you the perspective of just, of just creative pregnancy, creative juiciness flowing throughout. And sometimes the maker, the artist is really going to be talking about the mother wound. Again, if this is a, 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 uh, a fear-based perspective that the artist is coming with. I have seen more clearly in this last year than I have ever before that 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 card will show up not just to give you a different definition from person to person. You've again got to be able and willing to sit still really raise your antenna within your readings to pick up uh, the possibility that maybe that card, the Empress, again, is coming to give you more than one message, more than one reading within this current conversation. Quite possibly that card is coming to tell you or to talk about the, the recipient's uh, relationship to their own mother as well as the mother wound that they have in need of healing, as well as let's say any regret that that person has um, for the loss of a child or whatever it is, right? And dot, 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 dot down the road, that card is also showing up to talk to you about, um, depending on the adjacent cards, a creative output that will be coming into their orbit in the not too distant future. If I am solely reliant upon just what the imagery of the card is giving me, I'm only going to be sticking to the mother wound aspect, or I'm only going to be sticking to the idea of pleasure and languid living within the Empress. When the truth of the matter is, is that card might not be receiving or getting its proper voice, its proper audience, because I'm just looking at the imagery of the card. And really, in my opinion, all that is, is again, the perspective of the artist themselves. So, for the last time, choose your decks with love and care. Choose your decks with experimentation and curiosity. Try some shit and then not throw it out, but put it to the side if it doesn't work with you, if it doesn't resonate with you. I mean, there are decks that are widely popular and, and heavily distributed uh, out in the world that I just really and truly have had no interest in using at all. And it's not for any particular bad reason. It's just, I have no draw to the cards at all. And then there are decks of cards that I bought that I thought I would just love because I love like the, the simple, minimal uh, art that was given to each of the cards. And then I realized that it fills me with anxiety because it's so stark and sparse. And in my opinion, a fear-based perspective. And then finally, there are decks that I have that I just bought because I thought that they were pretty and nice. And the more time I spend with them, the more really, uh, I, I think I receive a comprehensive feeling and view on the meanings. I continue to unpack from 
each of the cards. Choose them wisely, choose them with joy, choose them with fun, with experimentation. Try all different kinds of decks. Stretch your limbs a little bit. But above all, try to not be reliant on what they just are giving you because it's quite possible that they're trying to give you a whole, a whole other breadth and depth of message and meaning. One part of its meaning might apply to this grouping of two cards over here and the other part of its meaning is going to apply to this one card over there and they're going to be ping-ponging off of each other instead of just giving you one solid meaning because that's what the card says and that's its meaning and that's the picture of it and that's that. Go deeper. Pause a little. Go deeper. Pause a little. Thank you so much for, for coming to be with me, for talking with me. Let me know your perspective on this and your own personal experience. Please, 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 please click the like button on this video. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do so and please share widely. See you next week. Mwah.